So I want to prove uh, the theorem that I mentioned uh, yesterday. So uh, we have a node here in the ring uh, with an ideal i such that a is complete for the i addict topology. And we have an, a fine group scheme and another one which is of multiplicative type and isotrivial. And so, Groton, so of course, if we have a morphism uh, of S groups, so this means a, a morphism of uh, A of algebras, it gives by reduction a morphism uh, for these guys. And so we have a map from the projective limit of this. Okay, so let's let's denote or see also by C out the completion. So the projective limit of the CN and similarly is the same. Uh, and uh, the, the claim is that this is a bijection. We are going to prove that this is a, a bijection. And we are going to make this in several steps. So assume first that so let's assume first that H is a is a di is a diagonalizable group. So that B has uh, this uh, nice uh, form. And in particular, so this one is, is free uh, over A. And so we see first that for any N, any integer N, so we see that the ideal I N B, so this is just the sum over all elements N in N. So let us denote by E M, the canonical basis of, of this group ring. So we see that this ideal consists just of the, the element in, the, in this group ring, such that every coefficient belongs to i to the n. And hence, we, we see that the intersection for all n of the i and b is zero, because this is true for the i n by hypothesis. And so we get that the canonical map uh, from B to its completion. So let's call it uh, tau B. So this map is injective. Okay, because uh, because uh, the, the kernel of this map by definition is this uh, this idea. And so this implies first uh, so. So this map here, if, if we have a morphism of algebra here, so of course we, we send it to the projective system uh, of morphism among this one. And, and so a consequence of this, uh, so hence, uh, so I say that this injectivity implies, this implies, uh, that is map theta, no, so let, let's call it uh, theta. This implies that theta is injective uh, because so the image of a given phi, which is a, a projective system of homomorphism, so this gives a morphism of algebras. Um, so, so we start with a, a morphism phi, a morphism of pop algebras, and there is this map here, which injects into, and the image theta of phi, so it, it, it captures, well, it is given by the, those phi n, and, and those phi n, so of course they, they live to a map of algebra like this, and so we have a commutative diagram. And, and so this map is entirely de determined by the phi n's, 
And since this map is injective, uh, phi is also uh, determined. Okay, so, so theta is injective. Okay. And now the, the, the tricky point is uh, subjectivity. Okay, I prove uh, theta is subjective. And so we take a projective a system of top algebra morphism. Uh, from every CN to the corresponding BN and call this PN. Yes? Hmm? Uh, it, it, it doesn't matter because of the, uh, this map is uh, uh, if you have this one, then you have you have the diagonal. And once the diagonal is given, since uh, since this map is injective, uh, well, uh, the knowledge of the diagonal map uh, determines phi uniquely. I'm not claiming that uh, that this one is injective. I I I don't know, and we we don't need it. Okay, so using this phi n, we are going to cost, construct a, a beautiful uh, diagram. Uh, Just like this, and so this goes by phi ten phi up tensor. Okay, so so this system, so this gives, so this gives a morphism of algebras. Uh, from C at to B at, just by taking the projective limit. But I carefully write morphism of algebras. That I'm not claiming that it is a morphism of pop algebras. We, we don't know this uh, for the moment. But so we have this diagram. And um, here, this goes to uh, B. Part. And so this goes via a map which we I call eta. So this goes into the completion of the tensor product. Okay, so, and so la, la, let's call the diagonal maps from B to B. So let's call this the delta B and similarly. Delta C is a uh, multiplication map like that. Uh, okay, so this is uh, this is the completion of the diagonal uh, map of B. So we have this uh, nice uh, diagram, and here we have the multiplication. Here, this is tau C tensored with tau C. This is tau C. So this is phi phi at. And the, the auto square is just, so this is a, a multiplication of CM. And so we have map uh, like that. And this goes all the way to BN. And so we have the projection here. And so this projects to BN tensor BN. And here we have uh, delta of Bn, and here we have phi n, and below we have phi n tensor phi n. Okay, so the, the outer diagram is commutative uh, because by assumption uh, phi n is a map of uh, Hopf algebras. And we can lift it to the inner diagram so, so, so these are just the, the projection and, and so the, the given map. And the phi n leads to a map, a map phi hat la, like that. And 
the diagram is commutative for, for obvious reason. But you see, uh, the, the, the trouble is that uh, so the, this goes into B hat, and the other, uh, well, no, so this, well, if we go that way, we, we land here, but this one is obtained by completing those maps, so we, we have to take the completion of this tensor product, and it is not the tensor product of the completion, it's something bigger. So we, we land in something bigger, and we have to prove that actually uh, we learned in the image uh, of that one. And actually, uh, we want to see that. Uh, and now there is this uh, nice uh, lemma by uh, Groton Dick that I think I can, I can write here. So we, we have the uh, lemma. So A is a Nettigian ring. Oh, and uh, so recall that B, so this is uh, the group algebra of this, and the multiplication of B of a basis element EM, so this is EM and so EM. So let A not even, and let B M and prime be a family of element parameterized by the product m cross m uh, such that well actually the, they are all zero they're zero if m is distinct from m prime and secondly there exist elements uh, b1 c1 up to BN, CN, elements in AM, uh, such that uh, uh, the family uh, AM and prime is, uh, is equal to this uh, map here uh, applied to the, the tensor Okay, and then uh, if we denote simply by AM the, the diagonal ones, then the answer is uh, one as AM actually is zero for all M, but a finite number. Okay, so let's assume the lemma for the moment. I, I, I prove it in, uh, afterwards. So now we take an element uh, C here. And so, okay, so le le let's, let's uh, use this to Okay, so so let's call this this big composite map capital phi. So we can we can write capital phi of C. So this is a sum. Well, not necessarily well a formal sum of elements A M E M. So it's because. Uh, this is a formal sum since uh, the completion lives inside the, the product, uh, this product. Okay, so, well, so it's a, it's a, it's a product. And uh, so we have delta at B of phi C. So it's again a formal sum of the A M E M tensor E M. Uh, okay, so uh, 
So this gives a family. So this gives a family A M M prime as in as in the lemma. Uh, okay. So, so well, similarly, the the completion here. It's it's some subring of of of, uh, of this uh, huge ring, but so if we if we start with an element here, well, so the phi is as that form, and so the image here as as that form, and so this gives a, a family as in and the, in this lemma because it's it's supported on the diagonal, so we have a uh, a m m prime equals zero if m prime is distinct uh, from m, and also as this diagram is commutative, uh, then by definition the element we have here comes from from this thing. Okay, and so by by the lemma, hence uh, the sum is finite. The sum is finite. That is capital Phi of C is a finite sum, sum for J equal one to R, say, of A, M, J, E, M, J. And it is actually in B itself. There is no need to go to the completion. And, and also its image. And then its image is just the same sum of A, M, J, E. Ah, oh, maybe I, I should write it here. Well, and of course, so we, we obtain that this. So this is the same sum of J equal one to R of A, M, J, E, M, J, and so M, J, and so this is not only in this, but it is even in, in B tensor B, okay? And, uh, and so in fact, uh, uh, everything factor, so, so in fact, a phi, uh, factors. So it turns out that uh, uh, five factors through B, and uh, and the commultiplication goes to B, and so B, and and so we have this, and uh, uh, and well, so since it factors, we can. We can just forget. We don't have to go to the completion. So actually, this is this is directly phi hat. And so the so the conclusion is that phi hat is a fault algebra morphism from C hat to B hat. Okay. So there is this little trick using the lemma to, to show that, well, even so in, well, it, it was not clear that it, uh, that, uh, well, we, it, it was not immediately clear that we had a half algebra map, but we do because actually, so uh, this, this map going to the, through the completion, they actually factor uh, through the, the, the initial objects. Okay, so uh, this proves the so subjectivity. If we prove uh, this uh, this lemma, okay, so the, the proof is uh, is not difficult. Well, it's uh, and so the proof of of the lemma. Uh, proof of, uh, of lemma. Uh, so define a linear uh, map U 
from the direct sum from a m future product by uh, saying that uh, uh, if okay so so if we take an element here so now here this is a finite sum okay so I have to, to look at this page. Uh, well, this is a finite sum, m over m uh, of xm em. And so we say that this is the an element of the product. So this is, so this is an element in there. So I, I just want to specify its m prime coordinate or any m prime, and I say that this is the sum of the m of a n prime m xm. Okay, so this is uh, the coordinates uh, of this. So well, so this is a, a linear map. And so we observe that on the one hand, uh, if we apply this uh, for x, if we take x to be equal to the vector em, so this is uh, the coordinate. Uh, so what do we get? So we get that u of em. So there is only one x which is non-zero, and its its value is one. And so in this sum, so this. Uh, so this is zero if m prime is different. Uh, okay, so let's let put a zero here. It, it will be better. Okay, so in in, in this in this sum, all terms are zero except when m is equal to m zero, in which case it uh, the value is one. And since this is supported on, on the diagonal, we see that this vector has only one non-zero component. And so this this guy is just a m zero times the vector e m zero. Okay. So I I I put the the, the, the substitute zero just to to explain the thing. But so now let me suppress this. So we have this for all m. And if we compute this uh, differently. And, and uh, but also, for any m prime in m, so we have that u, so it's m's coordinate. Uh, so what is this? So this is uh, the sum. Uh, so this is the sum, by definition, this is the sum of m of a m prime m uh, x m. And we use the fact that uh, uh, okay, so if we if we uh, write down uh, what this means, uh, so we find that this is actually equal to the sum for i ranging from uh, one to r of the coefficient c i m times e i m prime. So which is a which is the coefficient the m prime coefficient of this sum c i m times b i m prime. And so this is true for any m prime. And so u of m uh, belong to the submodule, to the to the submodule generated by the elements bi. So this is a submodule of uh, a to the m. 
okay? Because, so you, using the hypothesis and a small computation, one, one sees that the image of any basis vector is equal to, well, it's M prime coordinate is equal to the M prime coordinate of, of this element of AM. So this means that all these vectors belong to this finitely generated submodule. So this is finitely uh, generated and A is no serial. And so for the elements U of EM, which are equal to AM EA. So these elements will generate a finitely generated A submodule. Uh, of uh, of the product A M, but actually the the, uh, the they are already in this in this submodule, and this gives a result because uh, because. The, the, the basis, these elements are linearly independent, independent over A, and hence we get that AM is zero for all, but finitely many. Many ends. Okay, so because th this guy generate a finitely generated uh, submodule, uh, but they they are multiple. Each is a is a multiple of a, of a basis vector uh, of of this free module, and, and so uh, th there can be only finitely many of them. Okay, so this proves the uh, this proves the lemma, and and else this uh, bijectivity. In the case where uh, B is split, is this diagonalizable? Okay, now there is a, a little, uh, uh, so we need a little uh, descent argument. Hmm? Eta is the canon, eta is the canonical map because, uh, yes. Uh, so, uh, so this actually this 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 one sits entire into this one, and so there is a canonical map from. Okay, so this is a, this is a, the restriction to to this of the, this canonical map. Okay. Uh, well, um, well, um, well, maybe one can reduce to the to the universal property of, of tensor product. I, I don't know, but so the, the, it's so uh, uh, in any case, there is an obvious map. At, at this level, and uh, and so uh, this works. So we have proved our be like, So this is okay. So we just proved it. Okay. So so this is proved when uh, H is diagonalizable. That is in the case where B is this group algebra. Hmm? Yeah. 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 Here. Ah. Oh, so. Um, so uh, yeah. I, I didn't say it, but. 
uh, let me write here. So this this completion, by definition, this is the uh, projective limits. Yeah, B and terms of B. Yeah. Uh, okay, so this answer also a uh, Yashunedi question because uh, there is an obvious map from this tensor product to each individual ones. And, and, and there is a there is a map like that, okay? Because uh, the, uh, the point is that the uh, tensor product does not commute with projective limits. So when when we take the when we take the limit of of those guys, we we do not obtain exactly this one, but something larger. But so we have a, we have a, this canonical map, and and so all the work is to uh, is to prove that even so, uh, this one is strictly bigger than that one. Uh, then the guy who are coming from from C. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But but even better, uh, not only do we land in Biat, so 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 we do have a, a, a morphism of group from from H to G. Okay. So this this is uh, uh, well that's a nice uh, algebraic result. Okay, so we are done in this case because of this explicit computation. So in general. Uh, there exists uh, a map uh, uh, which is finite et al. Let me write it the other way, et al. Finite, uh, such that if we lift, well, uh, such that uh, the lifted object uh, becomes diagonalizable. Okay, and since this map is uh, is finite, uh, this implies that uh, a prime is also uh, separated and complete uh, for the iadic. Topology. Um, so this means that uh, well, a prime is a projective limit of the a prime of a n plus one a prime. In fact, this is true for if if you have a, a separated and complete material ring, then any finitely generated module is automatically complete uh, for the Iadic topology, and so this is why we require uh, the, the, the map to be entirely unfinite because we want to, to use this. Um, okay, and now we have another uh, nice uh, diagram. Uh, And so, of course, I, uh, okay, and as usual, let A double prime be this, and let uh, H prime, G prime, H double prime, so the objects that we obtain by pullback, so those ones of S prime, and those ones of S double prime. And of course, S prime is a spectrum of A prime, and S double prime is a spectrum of A double prime. Uh, okay, and uh, so this is a, so S prime to S is a morphism of descent. Because it's uh, any uh, well any faithfully flat morphism of a finite uh, locally of finite presentation is a an effective epimorphism, a universal effective epimorphism. So 
tensor morphism of, of the same. And so we have, which means that the first row here is exact, that the morphism from H to, to G is the co-equalizer. Co well, it's a morphism from H prime to G prime, which have the same image. And, and this. Okay, and we can look at the similar, uh, for here we have um, Okay, so again, we denote by a, a subscript and a pullback to, to SM. And here we take the direct limit. And so we have a map here. And this map is an isomorphism because what we proved, because the, the group are split over S prime and therefore also over this one. And here also we have this projective limit from of S prime N groups of H prime N, G prime N. And we have, and again, the canonical map here. And here we have from uh, the projective limits of form SN group of HN, uh, GN. And so we have this. And we know for general reasons that the functor of a projective limit is uh, left exact. Hence, the bottom, bottom row, the row is exact. Okay, so before, uh, before taking the limits, uh, the row is exact because it's, again, uh, we have a morphism of, of descent. So for each fixed N, uh, we have an exact row and we take the projective limit and projective limits are left exact. Uh, well, just, uh, and, and, and so this is exact. And since since uh, this is exact, and since these two are isomorphic, so we obtain that this one also is an isomorphic. Okay, so 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 this completes the proof of the theorem in the general case. Okay, by by this uh, well, this descent argument plus the explicit computation. In, Okay, in the diagonalizable case. Uh, okay. Mm, what do I need? Okay, so I think that I, it, well, uh, let me just state uh, 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 one more uh, result. Oh, yeah. Okay, so let me record all this in the following theorem. Uh, so let me just uh, record, so A, an uh, Algerian. Uh, so separated and complete uh, for Iadic topology. S is a spectrum of A, SN is that of A over I n plus one. And uh, G is an affine S group 
skip and edge is an isotrivial. Isotrivial. Empty multiplicative group over S. Okay, so we just proved that the, the natural map from from S groups from H to G to these projective limits. Is bijective. And I just want to add a, a second statement. Uh, suppose further, suppose further that uh, G is flat over S and uh, G zero is an isotrivial uh, empty uh, group over S zero. And then the conclusion is that then from S group H G. So this map is a bijection. So I think that this follows from what we, we have uh, uh, well so uh, uh, so the proof proof of two but actually so we we saw we saw last time uh, we saw in the previous theorem which was uh, I think it was eighteen. Point one that for any n uh, the map from from Sn Hn to Gn to from S zero of H zero to G zero is bijective. Okay, so this was a this was a, a consequence of uh, of our results of uh, lifting of homomorphism uh, between uh, ah no uh, yes uh, no let me think mm. yeah. Uh, Yes, so uh, no, G need not be smooth. So precisely, uh, this as uh, yeah, this theorem has three parts. In parts one and two, uh, there is a smoothness hypothesis, and in in part three. Uh, Maybe I, I left the smoothness hypothesis, uh, but uh, the, the proof does not use uh, that uh, G is that uh, G when G is uh, of multiplicative type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. No, no. Okay. And um, okay. So I should give more more detail uh, because the proof. Uh, of 183. Uh, so this proves uh, first uh, that uh, Gn is a multiplicative type of uh, Sn, and uh, 
that, uh, so let's give a name and pi n, and that pi n is bijective. Uh, using uh, duality. Uh, by this, uh, I mean that uh, we write that a G, uh, a GN, so it's a group of multiplicative type. Uh, so it is some form uh, uh, of an abelian group into uh, GM, uh, SN, and and then uh, well, there are some details that are, that I've written in in the notes, and one is reduced to the theorem about the bijectivity of forms uh, when the target is a multiplicative group, which is uh, smooth and commutative. Yeah, so there is this there is this trick. Uh, and I, and I actually, uh, when I wrote the notes, uh, the, uh, there were two separate uh, theorems with different hypotheses. And I think that when, when I merged them, I, I forgot. I probably forgot to, uh, yeah. Yeah, but so, but so the, the yeah, so the result is really true uh, and under this hypothesis because of this. Okay, so maybe I, I, I'll have to, to add some corrections in, in the notes, but it's, it's, it's okay for, for groups of multiplicative type. Okay, so I want to prove another nice theorem. Yes. No, no, that doesn't mean smooth because it 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 can be uh, uh, it it could be root of roots or roots of unity for uh, uh, hmm? yeah yeah it it could be mu p so um, well of course. In most cases, we will be interested in the case where, where we have a torus. But in case uh, we, we would have some mu p, uh, which is not smooth, so we have to, to be careful here. Um, OK, so uh, Okay, uh, so I want to prove another uh, theorem, also with a nice proof. So this is section 20. And it's a density uh, theorem. So we have the following theorem. Uh, let G be an empty group of a finite uh, type uh, over S. And for for each integer, so let's mg uh, be the kernel uh, of the map g uh, to gn, and then we have the following uh, following statement that every every closed A sub scheme containing all GNs equals G 
and every subgroup scheme containing okay so we have we have the the, the both assertions hmm? yes yeah okay so we take the yes those uh, those groups and they are they are dense uh, so the, the statement is that th these groups are, are dense inside G in the sense that any as a closed subscheme that contain all of them or just a subgroup scheme that contain all of them is equal to, to G itself. Okay, so uh, for the proof, uh, obviously it's, uh, it's local on the base. So we, we can assume that S is a fine. Um, and um, I know, so now let be a map like this, faithfully flats, uh, such that uh, the pullback of G to S prime is uh, diagonalizable. Uh, okay, so what we have to prove, uh, so we uh, want to prove Uh, that if we have an element f in A uh, whose images in uh, the ring of functions on uh, on n g uh, is zero for all n is zero for uh, all n, and then f is equal to zero. Okay, so this uh, this is a, uh, this is what we need to prove that uh, well uh, uh, we have this. But since uh, the map from a to a prime uh, is injective. Uh, it suffices. Uh, to do it at the level to prove the same assertion for uh, a prime uh, um, uh, so we can assume so we can assume from the beginning that g is already diagonal diagonalizable Okay, so so the, the the reduction is that yes, so we have the map so we have the map like this, and so we have here all of G prime, which is just uh, the previous one censored by A prime, and so here we have. Okay, so if we take F here with image in every uh, ring, he is uh, is zero. Then it's Im so then the image of F in this one is an element whose image in every uh, reduction is zero. So if we prove the so if we prove the result for a prime. So f goes to an element here, f prime. So if we prove the corresponding statement here, uh, this will tell that f prime is zero. 
And since the extension is faithfully flat, and particularly injective, so the initial f will be zero. So we so we can reduce to the case where m is uh, where, where the group is uh, diagonalizable. Okay. So uh, and a finite type. Uh, so by assumption. M is a finitely generated abelian group. Hence, we can write. Uh, so it is a it is a free part. Let us call it Z to the R, and a finite group with few finites. And let me denote by little Q the cardinality. Of the finite, okay, and uh, and and so the the ring of function on G. So this is just uh, the group algebra uh, of M over A. By let us introduce an intermediate ring which we call B, uh, which is the algebra of Laurent polynomials. in all variables. Okay, so this is a, so this is a group algebra of a, a of, of the three parts. Mm -hmm. And then then we see that A of M is the same thing as the group algebra of a ZB of the finite group B of G. Uh, okay, and, uh, and now let's consider an element F. Uh, so let's take an element F uh, in this, and so let's write it as a finite sum, sum for all X in Q uh, of the canonical basis element EX. Uh, uh, time some coefficient uh, bx. Uh, so with bx in b. So whose image in in the in this ring is uh, is zero. And so what is this ring? Uh, so this is uh, A of M over NM is zero. And we are going to prove uh, that all BX are zero. Hmm? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm lost. So, yes, let F. Yes. Oh, yeah, yes, yeah, sorry, sorry. Yes, of course. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh, sorry. Okay, so. Uh, we use this expression, so we, we 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 write f like that, and so we assume that its image is uh, is zero in each uh, in each uh, the ring, and and so the, this proof uh, that um, is, is due to Joseph Osterle, and it it appears in his uh, uh, in his lecture notes at uh, at uh, Lumini Summer School. And, and so the, so his notes are also on the on the web page and it, it's uh, well it's very neat and it, it's shorter than the, the proof uh, in SDA3 uh, okay so
So we, we have this uh, finite sum here, and uh, each should be x. Each be x. Uh, well, it's uh, well. So each each b x is a Laurent polynomial, and so let m uh, be the uh, the supremum of the absolute values of the exponents of the t as in the uh, various bx. Okay, so this means that uh, uh, hence for all x, uh, we can write uh, bx. So this is a uh, uh, this is a sum. Uh, um, well, I'm not I'm not really willing to to write this sum. Because, well, I, uh, so let me proceed. Uh, okay, so now choose uh, choose uh, n. A multiple of Q. So Q is the order of the final group, uh, which is uh, strictly bigger than this uh, supremum. And then uh, what is this M over NM? So the, since n is a multiple of q, uh, a q is uh, is already annihilated by q, and so this is just the polynomial ring t1 tr, so divided by uh, t1 n minus one tr n minus one. So this is this ring and the group ring of Q over that one. And so in, in that ring, in, in that ring, so we see that the monomials, uh, the monomials for T1, uh, to the uh, D1, T2 to the D2, DR to the DR, uh, BX with X in Q, and all exponents ranging between minus M and M, those so are Linearly independent. Uh, I think, sorry, I forgot here to end. Uh, okay, because uh, the, uh, we have only this relation, and so two, two, uh, two, uh, so, so this ring has a basis of A consisting of, uh, of monomials. In each indeterminate, so it's enough to take n minus one uh, of them, and any uh, well, if if we take uh, well n minus one consecutive ones, and 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 so this is precisely the the case like this. So the, the, there are no relations between those monomials. Well, we cannot have a, well to search t t one to the something, two different one cannot be uh, equal because uh, otherwise we would have a, a power of t, t1 to an exponent smaller than 2m, that could be a uh, unit element. So all those guys are linearly independent. And 
so the image of, of F in this ring, it's, well, it's almost the identity map. Or in any case, so, so the whatever coefficient we add here, so we get the same coefficient down there. And since this element is zero, all the coefficients are, are zero. Okay, and so hence, hence bx is zero for all x and hence f is zero. Okay, so this proves uh, so this proved this proved the first assertion. This proves assertion one. Um, okay, so let let, let me uh, so, so let me say that the, this sentence is is. Um, it's not the right formulation because it's uh, what I what I proved is not a, a purely topological statement because I I, uh, I, I, I hmm? uh, yeah no well, well I mean uh, uh, what I proved is is that any function in the coordinate ring whose image in the in, in the quotient is zero is zero so it it's it's stronger than having the same topological spaces. So uh, uh, it's not only that, uh, uh, yeah. So uh, a closed sub scheme that contains all GN, not only has the same topological space, but it's really G itself. So I, I, I will make it more clearer in, in, in the next version of, of the note, because we, we, we really proved that the, Okay, so if if this closed sub scheme is defined by an ideal J, we prove actually that J is zero. So this is a, a, a bit better than what I wrote. Okay, so now let's prove uh, the second part. Uh, two. Okay, so uh, over uh, over a field. Uh, okay, no, so let let S be a point uh, of S. Yes. No. Uh, uh, No, no. Uh, so actually, so one proves that one proves that if uh, Z equals spectrum of A G is a closed uh, subscheme such that uh, G N is a subscheme. of z for all n, then j is equal to zero. And so this is stronger than the mere assertion that the, topo uh, that the topological space of x is the same as the topological space, okay? Uh, because because later, later we are going to use exactly this assertion and it's not clear that it's con it's not contained in the statement actually. It's contained in the proof, but I I, I, I shall make the statement uh, more clear because the, this is what we are going to use uh, in the next lecture. Okay, and now let's prove two. Hmm? Oh, gee, yes, sorry, yeah, yeah. So, so it's it's a form of a schematic density. It's not only it's not only that the underlying topological space is dense, but it, it's a it's a slightly stronger property. Uh, and now let's move to. So let's 
S be a point. And uh, then, uh, okay, so le let's give an, uh, a name, every uh, subscheme H. Uh, then one knows, uh, then the fiber HS is a subgroup uh, scheme of a GS. So, uh, well, so over, so, so they are group schemes over the spectrum of, of the residue field. And one knows in this case uh, that HS, well, one knows every such every uh, subgroup a scheme of a GS is closed. Okay, so this is an, an easy result. So, uh, well, one can go to the algebraic closure and then in the, the well-known argument uh, using quantization. So you, well, you take the closure, but you, and you prove that any point in the closure is, is already in the, in the subgroup. Uh, okay, so so by so by the first part, uh, uh, one has uh, H S is equal to G S uh, on H fiber. Uh, and H has same underlying uh, space as, as G, hence it is a closed uh, subscheme. So H is a spectrum of OJ over G. And by one again, J is equal to zero. Okay. Uh, okay, so, well, so H is a subscheme. So by definition, it is a, uh, it is a, a closed subscheme of some open, uh, some scheme of, of G, uh, but, Fiber-wise, uh, it has the same points, uh, so uh, it is actually uh, it is actually a closed a closed subscheme, and we are reduced to the to the first points. Okay, so we have this uh, density uh, CRM uh, that will be uh, important in in the next uh, lecture. And I want to uh, conclude this lecture with, with, with another theory, a nice theorem that I wanted to give earlier, but I, I, am, I didn't have time to do this. So let's finish with one theorem that will also be useful next time. So I, I don't have time, I, I will not have time to give the proof, but let, let me just mention the, the results. Well, I, I will write the proof in my in my notes uh, later. So this is section uh, twenty one, and it is about three actions of empty groups on schemes affine. Over the base. Okay, so we have the following uh, nice uh, CRM, which is uh, 21.1. So let H be an uh, empty uh, group uh, over S acting uh, freely on the right. on a scheme uh, X, which is a fine 
over S. Okay, so this means that uh, So this, this means that we have an action map, which is a, a map of schemes, uh, which, okay, so on, uh, on arbitrary uh, T points, uh, it, it's, it's uh, defined as this, that's not a, an action. And uh, freely, uh, I remind you, so, so this means that, uh, uh, this means that the map, into x cross x, uh, given the level of points by this. Yep, okay, x cross x. So this map is a monomorphism. Okay, so so diff so so the action uh, has no stabilizers. Okay, so for, for well, if you take t over s and you take any point uh, t point x, then the group a h of t acts freely. Uh, yeah, h t acts freely on this. Okay, and then uh, in this situation, uh, the, so, so, so the result is that then uh, there exists. Uh, a scheme uh, y, which is affine over S, and a faithfully flat uh, morphism P from X to Y, uh, such that Y is a quotient uh, X divided by H. Uh, okay. Uh, and so in particular, well, uh, well, so this statement contains the, in particular the, the fact that P is H equivariant and uh, X over Y is a Tulsa uh, for the group H, uh, H regarded as a group over, over Y. Okay, but so, so the, the so so basically, so the, the important thing is that when we have a free action of a multiplicative group on on a scheme which is affine over the base, uh, then as a quotient exists and is also a, an affine scheme. Okay, um, and well, I just give an idea of the uh, idea of proof. Idea of proof. Uh, X is uh, given by a shift a, uh, a, a quasi coherent a shift uh, of uh, OS algebra A. Uh, and if if we reduce to the case where no yeah yeah it it it's it, 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 it's uh, it's 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 again the, the project the, the project uh, thing so well by by faithfully flat uh, descent one can assume that uh, we have this uh, No, no, uh, no, no. Free, free action means that there are no stabilizer. No, no, no. It's ir 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 irrelevant. It has not, nothing to do with the characteristic. 
No, no. We, we could have a myopie. Uh, we could have a... We, we could have a mu p, but this means that we take points in a non non reduced ring. Uh, we will see the, the the action. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's not smooth. No, no. It's it, it's a. Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It need not be smooth uh, because of the the fibers are. Yeah, we only it's it's facefully flat. Uh, then one shows that A is the direct sum of M over M of components A M and each A M is a line bundle. Is a line bundle. And for any M and prime, the products, or the, the product map to A M plus M prime is bijective. And then one takes Y is a spectrum of the degree zero component. Okay, so so one proves that the fact, so one reduces first by faithfully flat descent to the case where H is uh, some D of M. And then there is some work to prove that the fact, well, and so since H acts on X, there is an action of, of uh, H on this algebra. And so we, we have seen already that this decomposes as a, as a direct sum. Well, so we have the projector giving this decomposition. And, and then one proved using that the action is free is that actually each of them is a line bundle. And the multiplication map is, uh, is uh, bijective. So essentially, it looks like uh, it's, it's, it's so, so in a sense, so more or less, uh, so this more or less, this means that A is the same as, yeah, more or less this, uh, this means this. Well, not, not exactly, but, uh, so this, well, and, uh, and, and, and so this gives, this gives exactly that uh, X is a, is a DM torso, Above the, the zero part, and this is exactly what we need. Okay, so so this is the, the idea of the proof, and the, the the full proof is not much more difficult than that. So, and so this this is interesting because we will need the following consequence. Uh, so we have the following corollary. So let u from h to g be a morphism of S group schemes with h a group of multiplicative uh, pipe. Uh, so actually, uh, I want it to be a monomorphism. So monomorphism, this, this means that the, the kernel is a, is a trivial group. But then, so under this hypothesis, then H is a closed emotion. Okay, so th this will be important to us again in the in our favorite game of lifting. No? So we have a, we have a 
we have a, a group H of multiplicative type and, and G affine, which is a, a reductive group and over a closed fiber at, at the point, yeah, at zero. So we have a map from H zero to Z zero. We know that it lifts to a morphism. We can prove, we will be able to prove that the, the lifted map is a monomorphism, but it, it will even be a closed immersion. Okay, so which is, uh, uh, well, which is not always the case because of, of a general base, uh, there are, there are uh, many monomorphisms that, that are not closed in motion. So we have this, and this is all what we will need, but just for the sake of, compl of completeness and just to, to use the full strength of this. So let me uh, add the other things. So there exist, uh, Ah, okay, uh, I, I forgot to say G affine. G affine of X. Uh, so there exists a, a fine uh, S scheme uh, Y, uh, such that uh, Y is a quotient. Okay, so this is just a homogeneous space. And furthermore, uh, if uh, H, uh, if H is normal in G, uh, a normal subgroup, uh, then Y is S group scheme, and of course, and the projection from G to uh, to Y, which is G over H is a morphism of groups, of group schemes. Okay, so I don't think that we will need uh, this, but this, okay, so the, the second point uh, follow exactly from this, so there is a quotient. Uh, actually, the, the first part uh, follow from from this because so the uh, the quotient exists and is affine uh, and separated so the so the point here h over h is closed and its in inverse image is uh, is closed so uh, so actually uh, one comes from two and so this is a general fact that uh, well. Uh, uh, so, so in general, of course, this is not uh, this is not a group. This is just a, a scheme with a, a G action on it on the left. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. Uh, so this means that, uh, no, no, so, so, so uh, one means U is an isomorphism uh, from H to a closed uh, subgroups, a uh, subgroup scheme of uh, of G, and just a, a can, well, a counter example. So, well, it's a bit stupid, but the, that's that's the one that comes to to my mind. Uh, so over over a field. Algebraically closed of characteristic zero. So we take the constant group. So there is a there is a monomorphism into the the additive uh, group, uh, and it is a monomorphism, but it's not a closed immersion. So it is a monomorphism and not 
closed immersion. Okay, so the, 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 there are, yeah, so in the, in the realm of a group scheme, so there's, there's, uh, there are bad examples like that. And uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, so I just thought about uh, about that one, but uh, so the, uh, there are many examples which are uh, more re more reasonable than this one of of example of uh, well monomorphisms that are, that are not uh, immersions. Uh, but so the nice trick, the nice thing is that we if we if you have a monomorphism whose source is a, a group of multiplicative type. Then it is really uh, a close. It is an isomorphism uh, from the source onto a closed uh, subscheme of the target, um, which will be well. And, and so this this will be important for us uh, uh, later also. Okay. Okay. So I will stop here, and hopefully I, I will try to to tie several ends uh, in the next in the final lecture next uh, next Tuesday. Okay.